Okay, I'm going to do a, hi Chloe, I'm going to do a bit closer inspection and begin the disassembly of this engine of yours, Mike. Um, I have marked the crankcase 1, 2, 3, 4 for the firing order of these cylinders and so I can keep parts straight. Uh, don't worry, that will come off when I clean it. Uh, one thing I did notice here, maybe you're aware also, is this uh, cover here on the number 4, number 3 cylinder. It's cracked, split. I just looked on Tower Hobby's website and this says it's on back order until uh, September, so that's possibly why you didn't already buy that. Uh, in the meantime, I might be able to just put that, uh, put some heat shrink tubing on that. wasn't exactly what I thought was going to happen, but got no rings on both of those. Okay. Look at that. This thing has like next to no runtime on it, it would appear. I guess I was kind of hoping that this was going to be up a little bit more. Okay, it's always <clears throat> interesting trying to reach this long thing down in here around this piston to try and get at the connecting rod screws which are very small. This is the piston and connecting rod from cylinder number one, which they don't look too bad to me. There's just a lot of gunk on this wrist on this piston pin and it's pretty much wedged on the connecting rod itself so this whole thing is going to have to soak uh, before I can actually pull that pin out because I believe that these pads are integrated into the pin either way if the pin doesn't slide through the hole in the top of the connecting rod it's not going to come out anyway so uh, the good news is I mean look at this this engine looks like it's got incredibly low run time the piston ring is completely free. The only thing that's really unfortunate, and this is just kind of the way things are with these big multi-cylinder engines, maybe that'll help, I don't know, is that the crankshaft looks really, really bad. 
I mean, it looks really bad. And I don't know if that's all just rust or a combination of rust. I mean, it just feels bad. So that's going to have to, obviously, it's all going to come apart anyway, but it's going to have to get some serious, serious cleaning. But here's the, here's the screws for the other connecting rod here. So obviously, it, it helps a lot if you can pull that pin out from the piston first uh, so that you've got the piston out of the way so you can get at these screws better but because of the condition of the stuff on that piston or wrist pin it just wasn't possible to, uh, to actually get that piston off first so you have to finagle around and try and find the way to get in there and get these screws out. This is probably one of the more stressful parts of the job. It's the number two cylinder. These screws and these screws are the most stressful part of disassembling and the engine fasteners from the engine anyway. There we go. Again, you can see how crudded up that is. So I need to go get my ultrasonic cleaner set up and ready and I'm going to clean each cylinder separately so I don't get any parts mixed up. So this is going to take some time. I'll show the major steps of the disassembly but obviously not everything. Okay so all four heads are removed and we just have the block here. I'm going to zoom in Oh, it's just so dark in there. I don't know if you can really see how shitty this crankshaft looks. Now the thing that many of you may not know is that this is actually a two-piece crankshaft which is going to make it extremely interesting. And when I say it's a two-piece crankshaft it's split here in the middle and it's just got a steel collar as a joiner and the next parts of this are going to be quite interesting in trying to you know, pull this off isn't going to be that big of a deal. Um, trying to get this crankshaft out and stuff is going to be interesting, but I'll go to this rear cover next. Okay, so I was just removing screws here from this front housing, and as soon as I removed this screw, this corner piece came off. So it had apparently been broken already, and it came free when I removed the screw. 
So, I just want to let you know, Mike, all I was doing was pulling screws out. And that piece broke out. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I don't think that's, I think it's too small that I'm gonna, not gonna be able to JD weld that. I'm gonna keep that little piece. But I needed to document that for you. Here's where you improvise. You use an old wood prop hub stub <sighs> as a lever to get this off so that you don't mar anything up. Ooh, look at that. Holy crap, I got a whole crankshaft separating here. Ow, that part of the prop. Okay, my camera keeps moving every time I... Okay, remember when I was telling you about this two-piece crank crankshaft? Oh, the front piece is about to come right out here. Which hopefully doesn't make reassembly. Getting that center piece out is really going to be a freaking bitch. Man, I kind of wish I had gloves or something. These edges are sharp. There we go. Front half of the crankshaft is free. Look in there and see the other half. Half moon shape. God damn, look at that thing. Just look at that. I don't know if that's just feels like freaking rust. But I just man, son of a bitch, that's that's rough. Literally and figuratively in every sense of the word that's rough. Still haven't been able to get these cam followers out. And I really don't think I'm going to be able to until I get this camshaft out. Which I might have to just see if I can tap, tap down there and tap this thing out because it's not wanting to just pull out at all. Oh man, these things are rusted really, really bad. I hope I'm going to be able to complete this. That internals is really, really, really bad. Such a low time engine, and your crankshaft ends up looking like this, it's just horrible, really.